Howdy, partner. Welcome to the American West. A land of guns, bison, ghosts, and farmers. <laughs> Whatever. The movement of Americans into the great western frontier took place between the late 1800s to the early 1900s. There's a lot of different facts and policies you should know about this period. Lucky for you, Pixarize has got you covered. Let's saddle up and get started. First, take a look at the lady in the sky. Is she an angel? A woman? Actually, she's neither. This angelic figure actually symbolizes America and its manifest destiny. We've based how she looks from a famous painting you should know titled American Progress by John Gast. See how she's moving westward between seas on the right and the left? Well, this should help you remember that the Manifest Destiny was a belief that America should expand westward from sea to shining sea. In other words, the Manifest Destiny encouraged U.S. expansion from the original eastern seaboard all the way west to the Pacific Ocean. Next, take a look at the home. This home surrounded by farmers should help you remember the Homestead Act, which gave 160 acres of public land to any settler who would farm that land. Free land, I'm there. The Homestead Act encouraged many people to move west. Afterwards, check out the safety valve on the side of the home, which is relieving pressure from the piping. This safety valve should help you remember the safety valve theory. Basically, the East Coast was getting too crowded, and there were many more people than available jobs. Moving people west relieved the pressure of overcrowding and unemployment thereby acting as a safety valve. The Homestead Act encouraged people to move west, which is exactly why we've drawn this safety valve attached to the home. If you look just right at the safety valve, you'll notice a road sign with the words, Frontier, Turn West. This is here to help you remember that a man named Frederick Jackson Turner wrote a book titled, The Significance of the Frontier in American History. His book described how American progress would continue as long as there were new western lands for people to move into. His thesis is closely related to the safety valve theory, which is why we've drawn them close together. Now let's return to the farm. First, take a look at the farmer standing in front of the home. He's using a shovel to bust the sod beneath him. This should help you remember that farmers who moved west were called sodbusters. Notice how this sodbuster is holding a yo-yo. Well, this should help you remember that early on, lands were mostly farmed by yeoman farmers. Get it? Yo-yo for yeoman? Well, I thought it was clever. Anyways, yeoman farmers were small landowners who farmed their own land by hand. It was hard work, just like how this sodbuster is hard at work with his shovel. Shifting right, take a look at the banana farm. The banana farm should help you remember that later farms were called bonanzas. Notice how the shovels have been replaced with plows and mechanical reapers. This is here to help you remember that bonanzas use machines to work faster, making it possible to farm much larger areas of land. Now, take a close look at that steel plow. See how it's being driven by a deer? This is here to help you remember that John Deere was the inventor of the steel plow. Next. Pay attention to the dusty exit sign in front of the home. See how a black farmer is exiting the house? This dusty exit sign should help you remember the term exodusters, which refers to black farmers who moved west to Kansas in order to escape racial oppression from the south. Come on, cowboy. Y'all done with the farms yet? I gotta get on this train. Wait, train? That's right. Let's take a look at the train. This train is running on a railroad, going east to west, which should help you remember that the Transcontinental Railroad connected the east coast to the west coast with train tracks. The Transcontinental Railroad made it much easier to move people, goods, and mail across the continent. Shifting down, let's take a look at the cows moving north from the south. This represents the trade of longhorn cattle, which started from Texas and moved north to the railroad. The movement of people west may have solved many of America's problems, but also created conflicts with Native Americans. Settlers not only took native lands for their own farms, 
but also hunted buffalo for sport, which hurt Native American communities that used all parts of the animal. To help you remember this, we've drawn some dead buffalo in this buffalo herd. More importantly, take a look at this buffalo in front of the herd. It has both a little and a big horn, and has defeated this general who is surrounded by custard. This should help you remember the Battle of Little Big Horn, where General Custer and his men were wiped out by a collision of Sioux and Cheyenne Indians. So long, Custer. Moving below, take a look at this dancing ghost. This ghost should help you remember the ghost dance, a cult of Native Americans who tried to call upon the spirits of past warriors to fight against the settlers. Ghost dance was crushed by settlers and American soldiers in the Battle of Wounded Knee, which you can remember by picturing the bloody wounded knee on this dancing ghost. In response to ghost dance, the U.S. passed the Dawes Severalty Act in 1887. The Dawes Act tried unsuccessfully to assimilate Indian tribes by turning Native Americans into white American citizens. You can remember the Dawes Act by picturing these dogs being turned into the same white poodles. The Dawes Act encouraged assimilation which you can remember by picturing these poodles sniffing each other's bottoms. <laughs> Alright, next, let's take a look at the bloody sand in this creek. It's graphic, but memorable. This should help you remember the Sand Creek Massacre. At Sand Creek in Colorado, American troops murdered about 400 women, men, and children in cold blood. This awful oppression of Native Americans did not go unnoticed. Returning to the ghost, take a look at the book in his hand. This book, titled A Hundred Years with a Broken Metal on its Cover, is a recurring symbol for the 1881 book A Century of Dishonor by Helen Hunt Jackson. In A Century of Dishonor, Jackson describes the U.S. government's terrible actions against the American Indian people, which help inspire public sympathy for their plight. Whew! And that's it for the West. To summarize a few key points, remember the home for the Homestead Act, which gave Americans land to build farms in the West. Remember the train for the Transcontinental Railroad, which made for faster movement of people and goods. And just remember our buffalo with a little bighorn and our dancing ghost with its wounded knee, and you'll never forget the important battles between settlers and Native Americans. Well... I gotta go skedaddle down to the saloon. I'll see y'all next time.